And so I'm going to ask Sonia to come and share one of the great things that she has in the way of testimony about some things the Lord did in her life and the choice that she made and how God dealt with her heart and with her soul. So Tanya, if you'd come, please. Let's welcome her. Oh, I see people. Well, thank you for having me here today. Um, I did share with those that came with me, which is Priscilla and Shar and my niece Mackenzie and my friend Robin and Judy in the back. I thank you guys very much for being here. This is not easy. I'm not a crybaby during my Judy. Well, I had my agenda, but I'm going to go with what I feel the Lord is telling me. And I'm here today for her. This is my daughter. This is all I have. I've never done this before. Usually I get right up and I'm good to go. <laughs> oh, the Lord's really humbling me. That's all I can say. I had an abortion 23 years ago, and I aborted my daughter, Donna. And when I walked in, I didn't, I went and got a pregnancy test, but I had no idea, even though I had a son who was five years old at the time, I had no idea really what abortion was. I mean, I really didn't. I mean, everybody was doing it, my friends were doing it. I had no clue that was going to end a life. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I really not, I'm 45 years old, and not until I went and trained at the pregnancy center, I was in training with Judy, and I was reading in the back, I took the book home, I didn't even know there was different procedures for abortion. I thought everybody had the same procedure. I didn't even know that there was a difference. I had no clue this many years later. Um, I'm married to my husband, we were not married at the time. And we've had a son since then who offered to come with me today. And I said, no, I, I, I don't, I didn't want my husband or my son here. Um, I have one son that does not know, my oldest still does not know that I aborted his sister, only my youngest knows. Um, I think it was just the fact of having to look at him and him, they love me, but to have to know that I, he doesn't have a sister because of my choice. And my husband has also said to me, he will never have a daughter to walk down the aisle because of our choices. But we did not know. Um, when I went to have the abortion, um, he had already had two children. And I said, I'm pregnant. And he's like, well, you know, he didn't stop me. He didn't really, whatever you decide to do. So my girlfriend took me. They were in the Heights. And we went down there. And... Nobody told me what was going to happen to me. I didn't know what was happening to me. I just knew I had to come back in two days. So after I left the clinic, I realized I did not want to do this. So I called down there and I said to them, I don't, I don't want to do this. And they told me it was too late. So I came back and um, had the abortion and was not expecting it to be what it was. I mean, you had life coming out of you. They didn't, back then they didn't, um, I don't know really how they do it now, but I saw everything that was happening. It was the machines, everything was right next to me. I saw the whole thing. And all they do is make you get up afterwards and they put you in the back of a room with, you're lined up with all these women and you're given juice and crackers and you walk in the front door and you walk out the back door and they truly sent you out the back door. And so then I carried all that pain and all that shame. And I think even coming here today, the fear was, you're pro-life. Well, they, what will they think of me? Even though you wanted me, or I was invited to come and share, it's still I carry shame and regret, even though the Lord has healed me and uses me at the center. And my daughter, her story just has saved at least six babies. They come to the center, they come back there. One girl says, I don't think I came to the right place. And I says, why do you think that, honey? Ooh, I think it's a Christian place. And I said, you know why they gave you to me? 
which is why I go, because I've had an abortion. So I shared my story with her. She ends up getting an ultrasound and named her baby Precious on the ultrasound. I've had my son's friends, because my youngest is 20, they show up at the center. <laughs> Here they see my face. I'm like, you don't have to see me. If you don't want to see me, it's OK. They come back, they see me, they have no idea I've had an abortion. I share my story, I tell them it's okay if they tell my son. Another baby is gonna be born in this month. You know, and I have another gal that came in and now I'm gonna be her godmother <laughs> to her son. So I'm so excited, you know, but the pain that the women go through and the shame that we feel, we carry so much guilt and even though the Lord heals us and it's a sin, we have the choice of abortion and we murder our child and then you have to face that. A woman does not walk into the clinic thinking, well, I'm gonna murder my son or daughter today. She doesn't walk in there thinking that. She doesn't, she's not educated normally, I mean, with the, what's going to happen to her. Um, she just walks in there and thinking it's gonna be a quick fix and it's going to be over. So what I'm able to do because of my daughter, I'm able to tell them it's not going to be a quick fix. What you're feeling now, what's a crisis now is not gonna be a crisis in a year. You will never forget the day you walked in. My daughter would be 23, I think about, geez, she'd be walking down the aisle, possibly graduating from college. I'd have grandchildren, I can't wait to have grandchildren. All these things I've missed because you know I missed her first birthday, I've missed all these things. I know she's in heaven, I know she's whole, I know I will see her again. But women who've had abortions, and it's one in four, so that means I'm not the only person in this room who's had an abortion. It's surrendering the secret, it's the shame, but I tell you, if you can just trust the Lord, and many girls, we bring them to the center and they come through the class and they don't think they need it. Oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good, it took me over 10 years before I f first dealt with my abortion. Um, the Lord gave me a book about whole June heaven. I read through it. I named her. The Lord showed me I had a girl. My mother uh, died in 1987, so um, she's buried up in Walkerville. And I really felt I wanted to, in my mind, just kind of place her there. And I started looking all over for something to place on the on the grave. I wanted something to represent her. I didn't care what it cost. I'm searching and searching and searching. And God is so good. I drive up to Walkerville. I stop at the variety store. <laughs> and I walk in and I'm looking and looking. And in the aisle there's an angel and they're carrying little blue ba little babies in blue. And I thought, hmm. I was really bummed out because I thought, Lord, you told me I had a girl. So I st stood in the aisle with my head hanging down. I look up again and there's one angel carrying one baby girl that was mine for two dollars <laughs> and she still sits up there she's I'm surprised she's weathered all these years but yeah so the Lord does forgive us we walk through the shame but God does forgive us we don't ever forget the Lord has taken this opportunity taken what the devil meant for evil and has turned it around for good when we go to the center it's what <laughs> the girls can go have ultrasound I never had the opportunity to have an ultrasound I never got to see that. Nobody ever told me, you know, we t have books and with their permission, we can go through these books with them and say, you're eight weeks pregnant. This is what, you know, you're, has a head and fingers and toes. And, and I remember someone even shaming me one time and telling me, well, you were this far along and I was only this far along. And I thought, oh, so I come to Priscilla and I really felt bad. I, Priscilla says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It was, you were a mother the day you conceived. It doesn't, he or she who she is, they were going to be who they were going to be the day you conceived. It doesn't matter if you were five weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. It still was a human, it was still a person. So I guess I want you to even think about that. It doesn't matter. You can still be forgiven whether you were five weeks or 21 weeks. God still will forgive you. And it's a safe place to come. Um, we use surrendering the secret, and it goes on for eight weeks. There's a lot of hands-on things that we do. We do journaling. Um, the Lord does bring you back to the pain to walk you through it so that you can be healed. It's not easy, 
but it's a safe place. You're with women who have gone through what you have gone through. And you know, when I go to the center um, and I walk out of a room and I know that a life has been saved, you know, I think this is who I do it for. You know, I, I made a big mistake 23 years ago and I would do anything in the world to take it back, but I can't. You know, as women, if we want a new haircut, we go get it. We want to lose weight, we just go do it, right? Well, sometimes it's that easy, but. <laughs> but, you know, once you end your child's life, you cannot, you never can take it back. It's, it's final. Um, death is final. And I won't see her again until she, you know, until I go to heaven. So I say today, too, I guess I thought, you know, on the back of this, I like this. It says, love them both. And that's what's so important, is to love the woman that's, when we do, I mean, Judy and Priscilla have such love and compassion and such a heart. And for these women who walk through these doors, I, I watch them in amazement because, I, and they're my leaders, so I follow them by example. And the women that walk through the doors, they act like she's the first one I ever walked through the door. That's how they treat them, with such love and respect. And she's needing that when she's walking. She's already shamed and coming from maybe sexual abuse or all kinds of walks of life walking through there. They don't need anybody to make them feel worse than what they're already feeling. They, we try to do everything we can for them to pull out all the stops, all the fear. And sometimes I have to walk back to Priscilla and Judy and say, I think she's still gonna abort. It was a very naive thing for me. Because I thought, well, if I can get to that center and I can just tell them the truth, they won't do it. Unfortunately, some still make that choice. And I remember saying that to Chris. I thought, how could they, you know, I don't understand. I'm telling them and I'm telling them what I went through and how could they still make that choice? And that's where you just have to, you leave it with the Lord and you keep praying for her. And I will tell that girl, I will see you again. Even if you choose to abort, I'm going to love you anyway. But I promise, I know you'll be back because you're going to have to have healing. There's no way you can abort your son or daughter and, and walk through the rest of your life without regret. Also, like about three years after um, I had my abortion, I started, uh, I had a son, and he was, um, I think he was about four when I had the abortion. So it was about, uh, he was a little, uh, four or five, seven years old. Um, I started turning to drugs and alcohol. I tried to commit suicide and I thought, and here I had this innocent little boy at home, but I needed the Lord and I needed to be set free from my sin. And I wanted so desperately to fix what I did and I could not do it. I could not face myself. And I thought, well, if I just kill myself, then, you know, everybody will be better. And through that, the Lord brought me to a spiritual mother and has you know, really grow me for the last 23 years. So I do understand the pain of abortion. I walked it, I've lived it, I still live it. Even when I'm in the room with a girl, I mean, I, you're fighting, you're fighting for her, you're fighting for the life of that child, and sometimes I feel like I'm fighting for my own daughter. You know, I think, oh, come on, you just gotta listen to me. But just love them, like the back of your thing says, love them both. Because if they do make that choice, they are going to suffer the consequences. And one 14-year-old girl said to me, I struggled with her for two weeks. Finally, I came out of the room and Priscilla said, stay compassionate. <laughs> I wanted to just, ah. <laughs> She wouldn't listen to me. She was 14. And uh, she is going to keep her baby now. But at one point, yes, but at one, I'm sharing my story with her and she's just kind of, she's 14, you know, and she's just kind of looking at me and, so what? So I'm doing all, all I know to do, and you know, I walk out because I'm frustrated, and I'm almost to the point where it, she's going to come back, and I don't know if I'm even the one for her. And she says to me, so what's the big deal anyway? I mean, why, why can you have abortions? If, I mean, if you're not supposed to have abortions, then why are they out there? And I said, honey, they don't care nothing about you. That's what they don't know. They, I said, he, they're not going to take you like I am and try to explain to you what you're going to go through. I said, do you have any idea what's going to happen to you when you get placed on that table? I mean, I'm, you know, she has no clue. Her innocence is going to be totally ripped away for the rest of her life. 
I said, they don't care about you. I said, all they care about is your money. You're going to walk in there. You're going to pay $700 cash. I said, if they do five of you an hour for the next 12 hours, how much, how much is that? It got her attention. She came back the next week. The ba she's going to place the baby, but the baby's, you know, it's, it's, it's going to live. I don't know if it's he or she yet, but he or she is going to live. But see, the, the part I like about Muskegon Pregnancy Services is even the ultrasound. We're able to educate. We're able to, you know, um, try to pull out all the stops, get them to realize what they're doing. And I don't know how many times I've, I know I've said to Priscilla and to Judy, I just wish somebody would have told me. I wish somebody, I mean, it was still my decision, but I just wish I would have known what I know now and what I'm in that, in that counseling room doing with those girls. But even though I made the decision, I do go on for my daughter. And she gets all the, her and the Lord get all the credit. They get all the glory for today. You know, they really do. For all the babies that, that I help, my story helps save, she had to die for that. And, and I think about that. You know, I think, Lord, he does take it and turn it around for, for good. So thank you for having me here today. Um, we do have stuff about surrendering the secret on a table, I think, in the cafeteria. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, if you've had an abortion, please don't be afraid to talk to me. Or if, I like to tell people, just because you see someone talking to me doesn't mean they've had an abortion. You know what I mean? Because people like, kind of avoid me, like the plague, you know, like, oh, you know, if I talk to her. <laughs> so you can feel free to talk to me. And we do have place cards. Our, our cards are in the back. I didn't bring one up here. And there is a website on there that you can go to and, and confidentially um, sign up, and then we can contact you from there. But thank you for having me.